It's official, ladies and gentlemen. The new boogeyman in boxing, also known as the A Boogeyman of boxing, since he have all these fighters singing, oh na 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 na, as soon as he send them a contract. No other than Devin the Dream Haney. He's not just your ordinary boogeyman. He's an A-class boogeyman with a boxing hood on. He even have Gary Russell singing a different tone than he did previously. Devin Haney versus Gary Russell fight was only one signature away from being official. However, for some reason, Gary Russell refused to sign his part of the contract. Gary Russell continues to ask stipulations blocking the fight from taking place. Meanwhile, Devin Haney is doing his best on his end in order to make the fight. However, the sad truth, it takes two to rumble. This is what Devin Haney had to say when it comes to Gary Russell turning down the exact offer he requested from Team Haney. Devin stated, and I quote, Mr. Cap cried about stipulations. Now his cap ass adding stipulations. He don't want this shit. Devin Haney also added, Gary Russell, you are the biggest fraud in boxing. In addition to that, Devin Haney stated, and I quote, if he gets in the ring, I will retire him. End of the quote. It's safe to say Gary Russell is looking extremely horrible at the moment. Meanwhile, Devin Haney is shining, proving that he's the youngest, brightest star in boxing. You guys have to remember, Devin Haney did not have Gary Russell on his menu. It was Gary Russell that called him out four months ago, which Devin Haney in return gave Gary Russell everything he requested from the 1.5 million to no stipulation in the contract. And Gary Russell still refused to sign the contract, turning down the exact offer he requested. Now for starters, there is no justifying Gary Russell turning down 1.5 million. Because Gary Russell's highest purse was a half a million or around that amount, I believe, against Lomachenko. So 1.5 million is a decent amount, especially when Gary himself requested the 1.5 million. So why did Gary Russell refuse to fight Devin Haney? Well, there's multiple reasons. However, Let's listen to what Gary Russell had to say. According to Russell, he claimed he refused to sign the contract because on the contract, it does not state the zone or match room, which that's the network and the promoter of Devin Haney. So you would think it will be included in the contract. However, everything else he requested was included in the contract, including the 1.5 million plus no stipulation whatsoever. Therefore, Gary Russell claimed it was a blank contract. However, that don't make any sense because in order for it to be a blank contract, then it will have to say on the contract that $1.5 million is not guaranteed to Gary Russell or there's additional stipulations that we don't know about. However, that's not the case. So it ain't a blank contract. That's just how business work. After everything is signed and delivered on paper, Bill Haney will present the offer to DAZN and put the deal on the table, which DAZN either going to approve it or deny it. But most likely they will approve it because Devin Haney wants it, and it's a big fight. The zone will only decline the fight if Devin Haney was looking to fight a bum no one heard of. 
The reason why the zone kept declining Canelo fights because he was trying to fight Avini, who was coming off a loss for the WBC strap that was vacant since Benavidez couldn't make the weight. So you guys have to keep in the back of your mind. Canelo wasn't willing to fight Benavidez for the WBC strap. He wanted to fight Avini, who's coming off a loss for the WBC strap. Which is why the zone rejected the fight, since the opponent was incredible. The zone wasn't about to lose 35 million guaranteed for Canelo Purse in order for Canelo to cherry pick. That's a no brainer. That's business one on one. However, if Canelo was presenting someone credible, like a Charlo or an Andre, you best believe the zone was gonna put the money on the table which the exact same thing applies to Devin Haney. And since Devin Haney is even in a tougher predicament because he's the most feared, he's the A boogeyman, he can't find anybody to fight. You even have Lomachenko requesting French fries titles so he could avoid him. And he ain't the only one. Every single name at 135 is avoiding him. So he have to stay busy. Therefore, which is a better name? A Gamboa, for example, or a Gary Russell? It's a no-brainer. Obviously, Gary Russell is a more credible opponent. And that's why Bill Haney is going out of his way in order to make the fight happen. Which, if you may wonder, why is the process so complex? The answer to that is very simple. Devin Haney is his own promoter. He have his own promotional company. He partnered with Matchroom and the Zone. Devin Haney is still the youngest champion and also the youngest promoter in the game. So that's just how business work. A lot of people seem to forget because Devin Haney is so young that he is the youngest promoter in the game. Furthermore, with the facts being stated, you guys have to realize that's how Billy Haney does nearly every single Devin Haney fight. Since Devin Haney has his own promotional company, again, I keep insisting on repeating that point for people to realize that's how Billy Haney always operated his business. So with that being stated, Gary Russell already made it clear that Al Heyman gave him his blessing to go to the zone and fight Devin Haney. He also informed us that Al Heyman told him he's not interested in the Devin Haney fight because Gary Russell is the one moving up to 135 in order to challenge Devin Haney. So because of that, they have to put the money up. PBC is not interested in the fight. So since that's the reason, why does it matter if the contract states what company is going to host the fight? It shouldn't matter because if ESPN picks it up, it's even better since that's a mutual platform. However, if the zone picks it up, it's to be expected because the zone is actually Devin Haney Network. So what is the big deal? It should not matter if the contract specifically say the zone and matchroom. As long as you get your money guaranteed with no stipulation and everything you requested is on the contract, then it's a done deal. Devin Haney and Gary Russell could fight on YouTube, as far as I know. As long as Gary Russell gets paid, that should be his main concern. Other than that, if you are already willing to fight him on the zone, which is the competitor and the network of Devin Haney, any other platform is actually a better pick, making it mutual for Gary Russell. So this is all according to Gary Russell himself. Therefore, you cannot blame Al Heyman for anything. 
since Al Heyman gave Gary Russell his blessings to fight on the zone or any other network. He's free to do as he pleases. So according to Gary again, Al Heyman also told him he's not interested in the fight. So when Devin Haney told Gary Russell, give us the same offer we gave you and we fight you on PBC, Gary responded by saying that's a no-no because Al Heyman is not interested in the fight. You guys have to put up the money up front, which is exactly what both Bill and Devin Haney delivered. Every time Gary Russell had a request slash a demand slash a stipulation, both Bill and Devin Haney always delivered his demands. However, like I stated before, it takes two to rumble. So while the Haney's stayed delivering, on the other hand, Gary Russell Jr. stayed declining. And he told us himself, by Friday, if I don't meet every single demand, then I'm walking out. There is no fight. However, he got every single demand he requested and he still declined the fight. So it was clear as day, Gary Russell didn't want the fight. He always had extra demands. Them extra demands were met and he still rejected the fight in front of the whole world. I mean, Gary, instead of negotiating with Team Haney, he was putting out the business out in public. I thought it was a way to promote the fight. However, it turned out to be that Gary was trying to find a way out because like I said before, if every single demand was met in the contract, money-wise, stipulation-wise, then it shouldn't matter if the zone and matchroom names are printed on the contract because like I stated before, if the zone don't put the money up, then you're not obligated to fight Devin Haney for free. You're free to do as you please afterwards. So it ain't a blank contract. And if the zone accept the fight, then the fight is on. So Gary Russell could have signed the contract and caught Devin Haney bluff. But apparently, it was Devin Haney that caught Gary Russell bluffing. So Gary Russell really have to save face. He really put himself in a very, very tight position because it's too late to turn back now. He must go forward and fight Devin Haney. We already know Gary Russell is the longest reigning champion at 126, the most feared. However, Devin Haney is the youngest promoter slash champion and also the most feared in the game. He got everybody beat as far as I know when it comes to the boogeyman status. I mean, nobody want any static in his division, above his division, below his division. It wasn't Devin Haney that called out Gary Russell. Devin Haney simply picked up the call and on the other line, Gary Russell, after negotiations, he no longer want to talk. Just like Gary Russell dipped out of the live when he was chatting with Bill Haney. He just dipped. He didn't want to answer the million dollar question. You got everything you requested. Why not sign the contract? And Gary Russell, he went ghost mode. He disappeared on some magic, just like he disappeared during negotiations. So with that being stated, it's clear as day that Devin Haney is on his pretty boy stage. If Floyd Mayweather is the Michael Jordan of boxing, then Devin Haney looking to be the Kobe in the sport of boxing. Like I told you all time and time again, respect is earned, not given. And as a youngin, as far as I know, Devin Haney have OG respect points in the sport of boxing. I mean, he's on his pretty boy tearing ish up. So give credit where credit is due. On the other hand, Gary Russell, I was really disappointed by his decision making. I don't blame him though, because losing to Devin Haney could really cost him his career. 
Even Gary Russell stated, Devin Haney has a lot of guts to be calling me out, wanting the fight. And he gave Devin Haney his props for wanting the fight, which he stated, he bit more than he could chew. But the main point here is, I'm pretty sure Gary Russell at one point started reflecting on the Devin Haney fight, thinking to himself, man, this young man, Devin, he really want to smoke. Is he really that good? Why is he that confident? Which could have possibly altered his thinking. So in the meantime, Devin Haney, if he fights a Gamboa next because Gary Russell turned down the fight, then zero criticism will be received. Negative. Because of the fact that Nobody answered the call, so the man has to stay busy in case a fighter have the guts to challenge Devin Haney. So, if Devin Haney doesn't fight all year, then we know the zone don't have any money. So, Gary Russell could have possibly been right. But if Devin Haney fights in a month or two, then we know Gary Russell was trying his best to find a way out without looking too bad. It seemed like from the jump, Gary Russell wanted to fight a different opponent than Devin Haney because he's blaming on the zone not having any money. However, the zone is about to make Devin versus Gamboa for November 7th. If Gary Russell don't sign the contract because there's two names they're looking into, Gamboa, and Gary Russell. Devin Haney wants Gary Russell, but Gary Russell doesn't want Devin Haney. So Devin Haney is gonna have to settle with a Gamboa for the moment. And don't blame him on the date because Bill told Gary Russell on live, pick the date. We could fight December, I text you, pick the date, and we could make it happen. So like I said, I already explained it to where a second grader knows that Devin Haney wanted the smoke. Gary Russell was trying to find a way out. It's as clear as day. So with that being stated, subscribe below if you're trying to get smart about the minute, if you're trying to get dumb about the second, don't. And listen to these decaps, the dumb casual ass fans slash old media that don't know shit about boxing. Word to Roger Mayweather, may he rest in peace, inshallah. Big shout out to my bro Ski, my Aki Dante, for being the entrepreneur of new media that I'm a part of, the real media in the sport of boxing that talk about the real issues at hand without any bias whatsoever. And if you are a casual fan and you want to be a hardcore, all you have to do is click on the notification bell to get notified every time I post or go live on Split Decision. It's a boxing debate slash talk show mixed master engineer produced by yours truly, Aki, the past, present, and future undisputed, pound for pound when it comes to debating. I got these decaps shook. They're scared to look every time Aki's on TV because it's always bad news for these decaps. The truth is simply their kryptonite. And I always put the whole truth together like puzzle. And to all the decaps, this is a direct challenge. Quit treating our key like the Devin Haney of debating. Quit ducking and grow the cojones and call in. Got these decals shook. They be treating me like the Iron Mike of debating. In fact, with a record of around 800 debates with 800 KOs, is easy work. Allah only made a couple things perfect. Floyd Mayweather on defeat a record. And our key on split decision. So call in, tune in. And to all my broskis, if you want to be an Aki of mine, subscribe and click on the notification bell. I truly appreciate all the love and support. I've been very humbled by all the love and support. And to be continued on the next episode of Aki, Aki, Aki TV. Peace and we out here.